Welcome, welcome, people. It's your boy Q from Q Up Productions, and today's topic is going to be gain staging. This would be the first step in mixing. Um, it could be done actually when you're creating your track. I personally do not do that at that time. I wait until I get done making the track so I can get my idea out. And then I come in and do this later. But um, some people have different values that they like to use when they actually go in and, you know, record something. I'm going to mute this for the time being and just play it so you can see where the levels are. Um, this one here is hitting at negative 10 dB. If you look at the rest of these, uh, I think I have one. Here. Okay, we'll go ahead and mute that. But if you look at the rest of these, um, they're all hitting about negative 12, which is where I like to have everything sit before I actually start trying to do any type of mixing. So all of the faders are at unity gain or zero, uh, whichever you prefer. And if I have one that is uh, hitting a little bit harder than I want it to be, if I want to bring it down and the reason that we're all we're trying to get everything at a constant level is that way when you start mixing you're mixing on a level playing field nothing is already not too loud or, or too soft so you want to go in with everything even and balanced as far as the actual db level then you can go in once you get all that stuff set you can go in and actually start to tweak your eq to make things poke out a little bit more um, before even before you start taking the volume away from it see if you can actually pan it move it to a different spot you may get a a, a better a, a better frequency range that will make it sit better in the mix as well as put it maybe a little bit more forward uh, meaning that it's at a higher a higher frequency or if you tend to make things make things at a lower fre frequency it kind of buries it in the mix a little bit more or it sits it back So as you get in and start doing these things, and uh, like I said, these these tutorials that I do, a lot of them are, are strictly for, you know, beginners who are trying to learn the basics of what we're trying to accomplish with the things that we're doing. And of course, all the techniques that not only this tutorial, but other tutorials all through, you know, all over YouTube, the world is your oyster. You can do it however you feel uh, once you actually learn the concepts. So just learn the concepts of what not only my tutorials but other tutorials are trying to show you and you don't have to necessarily do them that way but maybe starting out you start to do it that way and then you figure along the way hey well i, I think i i, I may try something doing something a little bit different then you can venture off but as long as you know what the overall premise behind of you know what it is the foundation of what you're trying to achieve that's how you'll get better and of course definitely practice and doing it you know over and over again so um, back to this. So one thing that you can do, you have a choice. Now in Logic, they actually have a, a gain plugin. Most DAWs, uh, I believe, have the same sort of thing in, in some type of way. I know in Reason, they actually have a gain knob at the very top of the SSL console. Uh, for here in Logic, we have a gain plugin. And another thing that you can do is actually go to the plugin itself. And if you look, I'm not really getting as much out of the plugin as I probably should. So I can come over to here and go to the actual plugin that I'm trying to raise the volume on. We'll go ahead and move this down here a little bit or we'll figure out how we can get it. And we're going right here on this one. So I would just go here and kind of turn this up a little bit or actually, I'm sorry. Uh, we are hitting at negative 10, so we want to go down. So I can come here and I can turn it down. Let's bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so we're at 17, and then we can start to bring it up slow. And that looks like it's about right. And then I could just go to this one and do the same thing. I'm just going down the line. We're going to use the gain knob because the gain knob is a little bit easier. So let's hear what this sounds like. I'm going to stop it first. And then we're going to unmute that. 
Unmute that. And that's fine if it sounds like that. And I would not normally turn the stereo out. Um, down only did that for the sake of this tutorial. Um, I'm sure I've went in and edited it at some point so that it wasn't as loud, but um, you don't normally want to uh, touch this. You want this at Unity Gain at all times. Um, but the whole purpose of doing the Unity Gain, and I want to make sure I, I, I make sure you understand the process and the reason why you want to do that. Let's say you have a song that you are using as a reference mix. And let's say that reference mix has a RMS value, which uh, root means sum. Basically, it's the, the bottom floor of your music. It is what your perceived loudness over time is, is what um, this level is. So if you play a commercial track, usually they're up and they're hitting it sometimes minus nine, minus seven, uh, somewhere around there, minus six, depending on you know, how loud they wanted to make that track. And that's RMS, that's not counting peak. Now, sometimes that's a little bit hard to achieve doing everything in the box. I'm sure that there's a way. However, I am not a mix engineer. I am not a mastering engineer. So I do not know um, the ins and outs of how to get it to that type of quality. Uh, me personally, my personal best has been at about minus nine dB uh, RMS and still be able to stay within my threshold uh, of not going over zero dB and still having, you know, maintaining about minus three, minus two uh, dB reduction on the limiter. So those are the values that I like to try to strive for. And it, you know, it seems to have the mix sitting pretty good. Uh, it's good and loud, but not too overbearing. And you can still make out all the instruments and you still want to have some dynamic range when you're trying to go in and mix things. So loud is not always better especially if you lose dynamics and actually um, the clearness of the sounds that you're trying to throw out there as your especially your main sounds anything that's out in the front is definitely going to be crushed it won't sound good and this again this is my opinion this is my experience and from doing my music so you may have a, a different experience i have to always throw that disclaimer out there some people get sensitive uh, no, it's, I'm not saying that everything has to be concrete the way that I'm doing it. So um, you'll figure out what's your your favorite way of doing things as you go. But um, hopefully that's just a quick lesson of why we're worried about gain staging, what that does for us. Again, it's given us that level playing field before we start to do anything. Get all of your levels set and straight and then go in and use some EQ and compression and things like that to kind of make it mild find the frequencies that make those instruments sound good, bring those out in the mix, move and pan things to the left and to the right. And then that's where you'll start to get a really good balance and have a, a really great sound and track. So hopefully those tips will help you out along the way. Hopefully this video helped you uh, achieve a better mix or some, some sort of uh, knowledge gain in what we've uh, talked about here today. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the notifications button so you always stay informed of all the latest content that I have going. If you have any suggestions or anything that you would like for me to expound on, if I have that knowledge uh, skill set and I'm able to offer it, I will definitely do that. Make sure you leave me a comment in the comments below and I'll definitely get back with you again. Be sure to like and subscribe and most of all, stay queued up. Peace.